Hello everyone, welcome to Online Seller UK podcast. My name is Prabhat, I'm founder of Online Seller UK and uh, today we are discussing about Amazon branding. With me I have Emma from Marketing by Emma and Emma has really good experience of working with e-commerce sellers and helping them build their brands and boosting conversion. Welcome to our podcast, Emma. Thank you so much for having me, Prabhat. I'm very excited to be speaking about Amazon and branding today. I think it's a super important topic that a lot of Amazon sellers would, it's worthwhile for them to be considering and giving this some thought. Yeah, absolutely. So let's dive into the topic. So, um, so you know, as a seller, you know, uh, why should we consider about branding uh, when you when you when we put our products on Amazon? So one is it's highly likely that you are selling a product that is very similar, if not identical, to your competitors. So you have very few uh, things that you can do to differentiate yourselves and communicate to customers why they should choose your product over another product. And so the branding piece is one of those tools that you can utilize to help attract customers to you and to not only do that, but hopefully over time be investing in helping to establish uh, recognition and a deeper relationship with people so that they want to come back and buy more from you so that they want to tell other people about it. You know, I think when people are the topic of branding, they tend to get stuck thinking in terms of logos or colors and these more sort of static design choices. Mm -hmm. And then they also immediately go to those huge brands that we know, you know, companies like Nike, companies like McDonald's, those household names where you could even just see, you know, a small logo and know instantly who it is. Um, and while, you know, it's unlikely that most people will achieve that sort of status. The, the, that brand is so much more than the logo. It tells you a whole story about the company, what they care about, what you can expect when you do business with them. You know, everything from the customer service to um, the quality, all of those things are sort of um, embedded within their brand. It truly is an identity, almost, um, you know, obviously it's not a person, but it's this, it, it is a being more than just um, a, a static sort of thing that people have all of these associations with. And so your branding is much more than your packaging. It's the way that you engage with your customers. It's the way that you communicate about your product. Um, it's all of those different things working together. And by being thoughtful and intentional about that and by being strategic and using it as a point of differentiation, you have the opportunity to uh, start to invest in those relationships so that um, you can, you know, one day not just be that product that they got on Amazon, but be, you know, this pr product from this brand and you absolutely must go check them out and get one for yourself. Absolutely. No. Um, so you've, you've given a greater detail of uh, thoughts on the branding there on Amazon. Now I see uh, two kinds of products at the moment on Amazon. One where they establish brands uh, elsewhere on Amazon, elsewhere than Amazon and going towards Amazon. And there are, again, what we have private label sellers where they are creating a brand on Amazon. So uh, if we pick up one of the kind to start with and we can talk about uh, the established brand. So let's pick up our, our private label sellers. So if we sort of talk about private labels or uh, where they've not got presence elsewhere and they've started presence on Amazon, um, uh, is it a lot of investment there to build a brand on Amazon or what are the key things they should consider? If you could uh, tell us on that, that would be really good. Sure. And I love that you make that distinction. I think it is really important. And I think that this is a topic that both sides need to be considering when they are on Amazon, but obviously their approaches are going to be different. So when you're thinking about a private label seller and, you know, whether you're just launching your first product or you have a catalog already, but you're more sort of product centric, mm -hmm. the branding piece, I would say 
your initial efforts don't have to cost you anything it, except for time. You know, you want to sit down with, you know, either a piece of paper or an open blank document and just do some preliminary thinking and connecting with what your vision is for your business. And some of this can seem a little bit overwhelming at first because you say, okay, well, my vision, that's a big statement. How do I possibly get started with that? So a really fun exercise that you can do as a way to get your head in the game, um, but can also be a really worthwhile exercise to then be able to help communicate your ideas to either other people on your team or even contractors that you may eventually hire is to create a brand persona or a brand identity. So to really think through who your brand would be if they were a person. So, you know, what types of clothing do they wear? Uh, what's their favorite show to watch on TV? Who are their favorite influencers that they follow? Um, you know, what's their, like, do they have a pet? And that might sound sort of silly, but when you start to build on all of that, then you get a very clear vision of how you perceive your brand to be. And so as you start to fill that in, you can start to understand, okay, well, they would speak in this way because they have a dry sense of humor and they're a little witty. And so then that can inform, you know, how you write your product page or your, um, or your product packaging or your insert, or even your, you know, when you're handling different customer service interactions and that same, in that same line, if you're thinking about the kind of clothing they wear and the influencers they follow. So the type of aesthetic that they're attracted to and how they fit into those types Types of things and then you can utilize that to decide on you know how you may want to design your packaging or make your images look and so it's a it's a preliminary work that will not only give greater clarity to you but help to make sure that the story that you're telling through all of these different things are they're all telling the same story rather than fighting against each other because sometimes I'll find that you know the color palette that they choose totally clashes with this, the way that they're communicating. And so that's ultimately going to do a, a disservice to you. It's not that customers are taking a magnifying glass and looking at your listing and then, you know, examining your packaging and saying, this doesn't work. But it may even just be a little feeling that they get that says something feels off here. It feels, you know, disingenuous, inauthentic, or just weird mm -hmm. and but none of those are feelings that you want to be on your product and brand okay so um okay so cool so um uh, that's a good start and so if we are to um if we say okay key five things a private label um, people should start thinking about before even launch. I think from what I understand, uh, from what you're saying, we need to start thinking about branding even before the product launch of, uh, from what I see. So it's a lot of planning in advance. So if we are talking about key, maybe four or five things we need to think about, uh, if we pick and choose those five things, what would you say? So I think that while ideally you would be doing this before you launch, you shouldn't get discouraged if you have already launched and haven't done this because it is something that you can do at any time and it will be beneficial to do at any time. But it's also something that even if you've done present previously, you'll want to revisit from time to time. So I just want to be clear on that so people don't feel discouraged and say, oh, okay, well, I missed the boat. It's too late for me and all is lost. Not the case at all. So I would say the first thing that you should do, um, and you'll probably already be doing some of this in your initial product research, but take a really close look at your competitors and try to think about it from the customer's perspective. So if you are shopping for whatever this product is, you know, type in those search terms, look at the search results page and see how these um, brands or businesses are communicating about their products. Yeah. Most categories, what you'll find is all of the top competitors, it's, it's quite difficult to tell them apart. They are all sort of saying the same thing and their pictures look very similar. And so 
I think that some people get tempted by that and they think, oh, well, I, that means that this is what I'm supposed to be doing also. So I should just copy this. Yeah. And that's really the worst choice that you can make because these brands, they're already selling, they already have reviews, they already have, you know, some of that momentum on on Amazon. And so by trying to just do the exact same thing, you're actually making it less likely that a customer will choose you who has fewer reviews and less reputation. And, um, and so if you can look at them and say, how can I make myself different? Sure. You know, even if it is just the tone that I take with my writing, you know, like something, let's say kitchen products, kitchen products are an incredibly flooded space. It's very difficult to be competitive, you know, like let's say it's like a spatula or something. Yeah. So if you're just trying to, you know, make this sound like the best spatula for any home cook, it, it's unlikely that you're going to be able to be very successful doing that. Now, I don't know if you have um, the show in the UK, but here on Netflix, there's a, a popular show called Nailed It. Okay. Have, are you familiar with it? Um, well, I'm not, but other people might be. Sorry. I've, I've... Okay. So Nailed It, is, I mean, it's okay if you're not. It's a, it's, a, it's a funny sort of like, it's almost making fun of standard cooking shows. And so they have home bakers come onto the show and they, all of the bakers are terrible bakers. And then they make these ridiculous looking, you know, baked goods because they're just awful, but they all love baking. So it's, you know, it's not mean, it's just playful. And it's sort of saying, you know, you don't have to be an amazing chef in order to get a lot of joy out of cooking. And in fact, it's okay if you're terrible because you're not necessarily doing it for anybody other than yourself and the fun that you're having. So that is a very different perspective and one that you don't really see reflected in the kitchen category. So if you could find a way and it, you know, if it, obviously if it would make sense for there to be, you'd want to make sure that you do your research and that you see that there are customers that would relate to that sort of thing. But assuming that there are, you could have a product line that's really targeted to those kind of people. So they don't take themselves too seriously. Maybe they're not looking for, you know, the products that are, you know, for the professional chef uh, out there. They're looking for the products that are maybe going to be fun or easy to use, that don't take themselves too seriously. I would imagine that there's some humans humor scattered throughout. And so all of those things, while the spatula may be exactly the same as 20 other spatulas that are already listed there, by taking that approach, you are differentiating yourself and you're actually making it easy for customers that would be interested in a product like that to choose you because you're, act, you're giving them something to make a decision on. It can be really frustrating as a customer to go on Amazon and to try to choose a product. Like there's so many times that as a customer, I go on and I look around and I'm like, you know what, I don't, I, I can't deal with this. I don't have the, you know, emotional energy to, to try to figure out which product to get. Cause I just, it, they don't give you something to compare against. And so that branding piece can be such a instrumental tool in helping customers to have an easier decision. So that was a long answer. You asked for five tips, but that's, that's one of the most important tips that I, I think it's really two tips. So it's both looking at your competitors but then secondly, getting a really clear idea of who the customers are that you're trying to communicate with, because while you need to know who you are as a brand, you also have to have a really clear idea about who your customers are so that you can help facilitate that conversation. Otherwise, you're just sort of speaking into a vacuum and you may not be <laughs> able to actually connect with anybody. Yeah. So I would say those are two really important things that everybody should be constantly doing. Okay. No, that's, that's a really good tip because like you said, it says it's uh, Amazon is in flux with a lot of products. It looks similar and it's good to stand out from the crowd. Now let's move on to the brands which are already established uh, away from Amazon and they are new to Amazon. Now some brands just go in and uh, they may not have resources to improve their content on Amazon. So uh, if you could talk us through, you know, what, we, what a brand should do when they go into Amazon and 
what are the things they need to take care of and why that'll be really yeah yeah i love that you asked this question um so surprisingly i feel like a lot of times established brands are some of the worst offenders with with this and i don't know if it's from lack of resources lack of knowledge or an assumption that because they are already a recognized brand they don't necessarily have to you know, invest in this because people will buy them because they're, you know, they're going online and searching for um, Maybelline mascara or, you know, trash bags from Glad or whatever, whatever brand it may be. And so they don't feel like it's necessary to do anything more. But I think that can be problematic from a few perspectives. First of all, there's this uh, greater awareness of potential issues with counterfeit goods. And so from my perspective, whenever I'm seeing a product page from a big brand and it just doesn't look good and professional, it indicates to me and makes me wonder, is this even a legitimate product or is this a knockoff? Mm -hmm. And so you may be turning customers away just on that alone. Um, then on top of that, you have a lot of competitors that are in the private uh, label, you know, Amazon focused space. And because they are not managing so many channels, they're able to really figure out what you need to do in order to succeed on that platform. And so if you want to maintain that dominance that you have in other, you know, in retail and at on other uh, online websites, you wanna make sure that you are giving yourself a chance and playing that game and not just relying on your, you know, brand, um, brand authority that you've already established elsewhere. So being thoughtful about how can you really represent your brand in the same way that you are in all of those other spaces. So that continuity is so important. So not just, in investing in the effort to, to make sure that you have a well put together listing. And, you know, likely if you're, um, if you're a big enough business, you may even have bits and pieces that you can take from your website and from other product pages and then just do more refining if you don't necessarily have a lot of resources to put towards their creation. Um, but one way or the other, just assuming that people will buy it because they know your name is likely costing you sales. But it's also, you know, there's, it's not just what you're writing. The, the SEO component, component is also really important. And so if you have a really minimal product page, you're also potentially minimizing your opportunity to index and rank as well as you could be. So there are a few different facets going on there that if you don't have the resources or time internally, it may be worthwhile to work with somebody that uh, really knows Amazon and can help you with that piece, even just on a contract pace, basis to get it up and running and, and reflecting your business in the way that it should be presented. Okay. No, I think that's, that's, a, that's a really uh, a good tip you've given. You know, it's, it's, it's very common to see just brands go in and not have a, a really good pace where the bullet point is missing or maybe photos are missing and things like that. So, so it's a, it's a good awareness that you've raised today. So I think, uh, we've covered both of the aspects and what we needed to cover in terms of branding. Um, so lastly, if uh, somebody is to uh, find out a bit more about you and you know, what you do and how you can help, so where is the best place to find you and get to you? Sure. So our website is www.marketingbyemma.com. We're also on Facebook at Marketing by Emma. I would say those are the two main platforms. I've also recently been going down the clubhouse rabbit hole. So if you are interested in uh, hearing about some of the conversations that I'm getting into, I'm at M-X-E-M -E there. So I would say those are the three main places. Uh, we also offer free listing analyses. So if you're not sure whether your listing is doing what it should be, whether you are an established brand or a recently launched seller or somewhere in between, uh, you can go to our website and fill out that form and we'll provide you with some free feedback about things that you can 
may want to consider doing to um, improve the quality of your listing. Okay, Doc. Right. So thank you very much again for your time, Emma, today. And I'm sure uh, people who are listening today have found this really useful. And I'll speak to you soon, Emma. All Great. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.